Hey there, everybody. Welcome. Um, well, this is bananas today. I had intended to work on a drawing about perspective, and if you had watched the previous video, you would have heard me talk about working on a city scene. Uh, well, we're asked to stay indoors, and so I decided I'd switch up uh, the subject a bit and work with, you guess it, bananas. So you'll find the reference photo in the description. Um, so if you'd like to print that out or have that up, you can certainly draw along with me, grab some pencils. If you've got some charcoal, we're going to use that as well. Um, and I'm just going to get right to it. Um, let's see, I want to make sure that the connection is working well here. Looks like it's kind of jumping around here. Let me see if I can adjust the stream here. All right. Hold on a second. It seems as though once it got going, it started uh, jumping around on me. So I'm going to adjust the settings a bit, see if we can get a little bit smoother. Sorry for the delays. So use this time if you want to to uh, to get your uh, get your stuff ready. All right. Is everybody having any trouble viewing this thing? I'm getting some error messages saying that it might be a bit uh, a bit laggy. So drop down. Checking out the the stream settings here. Everything seems to be set. Um, Uh, and did you find, uh, let's see, Stephanie asked where the, the photo is. So, so that's in the description for the event. Um, I need to get back to where I'm going here. I need to get back to the studio here so I can catch up with this. So, all right. Well, it looks like it's coming through. Um, my computer seems to <laughs> be having some issues. So I'll just keep going. If you are um, if you do experience any trouble, I'm watching the, the chat here so I can follow along. So what I've got here, as you can see, are the bananas. And now I already started laying this out. Um, you might be able to see some of these faint lines on here. Uh, one of the things that I did is I, I was kind of playing around with this subject earlier. Um, and uh, what I had done is I had toned the whole paper and that did not serve me very well at all. Uh, what happened is that this whole area up here that is, in, that is nice and white in the photo, um, it just got too, uh, too muddy. Um, so I'm going to take a, a, a different uh, approach to this uh, than what I had initially intended. Um, and what I want to do is first start by laying out the basic structure of the, uh, of the bananas that I'm looking at here. Now you're going to see that in the subject I've got um, this blue tape, uh, you know, crossing over uh, the bananas here, and that's not just a reference to, uh, you know, the the rather viral sensation of that work of art with a banana duct tape to the wall. Um, one of the benefits to doing this is that that tape forms a really nice tangible line, and you can see how it how it flows over the form of the bananas, and that can serve us um, really well um, in in our drawing because. Uh, it it helps to reinforce the form of the bananas. Uh, so with these more organic shapes here, we don't have a whole lot that we can really sink our teeth into uh, in terms of planes. Uh, I took this photo here uh, in, in a way that accentuated the, the shadows, but you can see there are these subtle transitions in, uh, in parts of those areas. And so that tape, what that does is it it just provides some more structure. Again, something that we can sink our teeth into. And one of the challenges that I liked about it as well is that it really helps me to see um, the shadow forms and think about the shape of the shadows, not necessarily the shapes of the objects. So for example, the tape is, 
you know, it's definitely, it's a different object, it's a different color than the banana, but I wanna see how that shadow kind of fills in those areas. Um, and, and then build the, the, the various objects out of that. Um, so in order to, to kind of get started here, now that I have things kind of blocked in, I kind of worked with some basic, um, some basic site measuring, uh, which I covered in, in one of the other videos there. So um, to kind of work out that basic form, and I've got these lines kind of lightly established on there. Um, and now what I want to do is I want to block in the main shadow forms. So what I'm thinking about here is not necessarily, am I drawing a banana or am I drawing the tape? I am thinking about, am I drawing the shape of a shadow that I'm seeing here? And that is a feature that is an element that is used uh, and it's very helpful to kind of uh, to familiarize yourself with whether you're drawing or whether you're painting um, is to think about those shadow forms. So you can see here, for example, I'm not, um, I'm not preserving the edge of the banana at this point. I've already had that established and I've already thought through that a bit so I can get that back when I need to. I'm just thinking about the overall shadow forms here. And so in this case, the, the form of the banana that I had originally drawn in um, is, uh, you know, it's, it just kind of gives me some, uh, some guidelines to work within. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I am happy to sell this drawing for $125,000, David. Um, absolutely. I'm going to get some of this back in here. Um, and Betty said the drawing is a bit light. Um, if, if anybody else is experiencing that as well, I can adjust the settings on the camera to kind of tone that down. If it's getting, maybe perhaps it is getting a bit bleached out. Let's see. How's that? That might be a bit better for you. All right, so now that I've kind of blocked in these shadows, um, I'm going to actually kind of wipe this down. One of the things that's nice about this, this subject as well, if I bring the reference photo in here, you can see that it gets kind of lighter in the upper left, a little bit darker down in here. You can definitely see how dark it gets in this lower corner against the white of the paper. So I'm not all that worried about kind of muddying things up in this corner. I really just want to preserve the lights in that, that area up there. So I'm going to kind of wipe this down a bit reestablish and, and a lot of a lot of drawing a lot of painting is taking things down and then building them back up again um, and and what I mean by that is is, is kind of what you're what you're observing here is I'm building up these forms building up these values uh, looking at the shape of the light and the shadow uh, and then I'll, I'll knock it back down uh, build it back up and and every time I'm taking a pass at this I'm, I'm furthering my understanding of the subject here. So I've got my reference photo in front of me on top, so it's out of the screen here. Um, let's see. So did, did the adjustment of the, the lights, did that help everybody? All right, hopefully, let me know if, if anything has kind of come up again. So. Now I've got, again, I've got the light lines uh, kind of still established. I have, I'm losing them in here um, a little bit, so I might have to redraw, reestablish those edges. Um, and what I'm trying to do at this point is I'm trying to be a little bit more careful with the forms that I'm looking at. So where in the a previous uh, drawing, I may have um, been kind of more careless about the edges and using negative drawing to pull out some of the some of the light areas. Definitely up in this area, I want to preserve that light a bit more. And so I'm kind of being a bit more uh, sensitive to that and, and paying attention to those edges. Um, in part because one of the things that it does is, again, if you look at the reference photo, that light background um, against this dark spot, and especially against the dark shadow here, helps to pop that forward and helps to reinsen reinforce that sense of form. And that's really what I liked about this arrangement of the bananas is the way they kind of intertwine 
you know, we have this one that cuts um, behind and then back up and in front. And you get a lot of these uh, concave and convex overlapping forms that I feel is, is visually interesting. And then the tape um, helps to, again, reinforce, reinforce that sense of form, um, as well as makes you think deeply about uh, modern art and the human condition. Uh, so if you are, if you're drop following me along, I, I always recommend kind of working from life as much as possible. Um, the in this case, again, I'm working from the photograph. I feel like it it might be easier for everybody to kind of follow along. But if you get a chance, if you have, of course, your own your own bananas here in your your house, um, and you're stuck inside like I am, I recommend setting things up uh, yourself. Now this photo, I I took um, using just natural light. Really, one of the, the, the really the best light source you can get is natural light. So I had some, um, I just had you know turned off the in, indoor lights. I uh, opened up the blinds on a nice sunny day, let that kind of filter through the house, and then use that to create this um, this setup here. And it creates this really nice kind of classical lighting situation. So um, now you you can see as I'm I'm working on establishing that cast shadow. So whereas I was working on the, the overall um, shadow shape that combined both the form shadow and the cast shadow, now I'm kind of working more on the, uh, that cast shadow. I'm not thinking too much about preserving that edge along in here. I can think about this shadow along here as well. Um, now, if you're unfamiliar with those terms of form shadow and cast shadow, of course, a cast shadow is the shadow that an object casts onto the surface. A um, form shadow is the shadow that is on the form of the object. Um, so in this case, in the reference photo, of course, the cast shadow is below it. That's being cast onto the surface. The form shadow is the, actually the shadow on the, the banana. Um, and then the, the entire shadow shape is that combination of the two. And so as, a, as you're working through your drawing, really start to pay attention to how those relate to one another. Uh, and one of the things we've talked about uh, in this series uh, before as well is, is tack attacking curves um, as a series of kind of shorter you know, straight edges rather than trying to get it all in one go. Like break it up into shorter uh, sections and focus on the, the form of each one as you go along and piece them together, paying attention to the overall path and the shape, um, but breaking that edge up. It's gonna feel more naturalistic um, and it's gonna give you a better understanding of that form. And I haven't really pulled out the eraser a whole lot. I'm not worried too much about that. At this point, let me see if I can establish some of the form in here going into that that shadow, that form shadow. Hello from Belgium. Excellent. Welcome. I hope everybody's doing okay as we head into the weekend. I know things have changed rapidly from, change from day to day. Um, and I just feel like this is a wonderful way to step away from the news, the situation that we're all within right now, um, hone our skills, work on some kind of concentration, connect with other people, try new things. All right, so you can see that vine charcoal really is soft. If you've never used it before, I really recommend giving it a shot. Um, you can see I haven't really defined the edge of the tape. I'm just most, still mostly thinking about that shadow. I'm gonna think about this shadow in here. This is really kind of interesting the way the tape kind of buckles a bit as it wraps around there. Um, and if you've watched any of the previous videos too, I talked a lot about the direction of the marks. I am not doing as great a job with that as uh, I'd like to. I'm really relying on this diagonal mark right now that. Um, that's not helping me with the cross contour of the bananas, but that's that's all right. I think at this point, I'm not going to be too worried about it because um, this is the vine charcoal that is very soft. 
going to start to smooth things out a little bit. Um, let me see here. But I'm feeling good about the overall, the overall form. So what I'm trying to do is, as I as I kind of look and squint my eyes, I'm trying to look at the overall mass and see if it, it generally um, adheres to what I'm looking at. Um, now in this case, I, I think getting an accurate drawing, getting those curves right, getting the proportions right, is always a uh, a helpful goal in terms of developing your skill. Um, but I don't know for, for this drawing how, how much how, you know, critical that really is for me to get the proportions right and get these curves right. You know, the, especially with these more organic forms like a banana, um, they can be more forgiving. I can be off with, uh, the, with the proportions and with the curves and it can still be recognizable as the object that it is. You know, it's, once you get into portraiture, for example, it can be um, more critical that you really get those proportions right. Um, but having said that, setting yourself the goal of really dialing in those proportions and getting them correct uh, is a very helpful skill. Um, it really helps to build the, the hand-eye coordination. Uh, it trains your, your eyes a bit more. All right, I'm feeling good about that at this point. And right now what I'm doing is now I'm just, this hand is just making a mess over here. Um, I think it's time to wipe this down build it up again, but this time I'm going to be using some compressed charcoal. So I've got uh, my charcoal pencil. I've got a 2B here. And this is, so it's going to be largely done using this 2B pencil. Um, now I want to be sensitive to the edges. If I draw these, these contour lines of the banana too heavily, it's going to really flatten them out and I don't want that. The whole point of having the tape is to help me to see the form of the banana more effectively. And if I then go through and I outline with a hard line around the bananas, it's gonna work against that. So I really wanna pay attention to um, the, the edges and I need to be sensitive to that. Uh, and at the same time, um, I, I think this is a good time to make some subtle corrections and kind of refine that. So I wanna keep these marks really light and loose. So you can see that I'm holding my pencil very lightly towards the back, letting the weight of the pencil do its thing And I'm just kind of giving myself some additional form, some structure to what I'm looking at so that as I work through the final pay, uh, pass at this of this drawing, that I'm kind of seeing things effectively. So now I'm in the shadow here, I'm looking for the edge of the banana, cutting through that shadow. to ask myself how critical it is for me to get this, this kind of the, the stem here of the banana correct. Now I like to use my, my pinky as kind of a, a tripod, as an anchor. Um, again, I'm just using the weight of the pencil, so I'm not really bearing down. I'm just using the weight of the pencil to create these marks using my pinky as support. Um, not necessarily because I want to keep the um, keep my hand off the paper as much as I just need that additional support. Um, and again, I'm locking my wrist. I'm not drawing like this. I'm not you know, flicking the wrist and using that natural curve there at this point. I can do that towards the end as I get um, kind of more detail. Victor says, say hi to artist daughter Elizabeth. Hello. How are you? Thank you for joining. Um, this is exciting. Minnesota, we have people. This is fantastic. So welcome, Marianne, Phil, Luke, Forrest, Betty. Excellent. Hello, Sarah. I hope everybody is, if you're not drawing along, um, at least you're drawing something. Um, this is something I, I really neglect quite a bit. Um, in my, my own work, uh, as, a, as a painter, I, I tend to really spend my, my free time creating more finished works of uh, painting, and this is a skill that I um, am really excited that I can kind of dig into um, to help with my painting. I can, you know, I'm not thinking about color, thinking about value, form, shape, composition, all of these things that are really critical, hoping that it's going to help inform my, 
um, inform my painting. So now what I want to do is, see, I want to get this tape kind of established again. So I'm looking at kind of landmarks. So I found that, that top corner of the tape. I'm going to come down and I can see that this point in the tape where it, uh, where it kind of wraps around the banana is right below it. You know, one of the things you can do, if you're ever working on trying to get a straight line um, and you, you don't want to pull out your ruler, you can see that I'm, I'm kind of anchoring my pinky um, right here on the edge, locking my wrist, locking the pencil, and I'm just using that as a guide. And, you know, in this case, I don't necessarily want a purely vertical line, but this kind of gives me some orientation for that. So give that a shot. Use the edge of the paper as much as you can. That's giving me some additional support, um, and it kind of acts like a, a plumb line. So a plumb line is a vertical line that you drop down, and you can use that to orient yourself um, and see the shape and the angles of things a bit more effectively. Um, and so this becomes a, a kind of a, a, a type of a plumb line as I'm thinking about the vertical edge of the paper and then how the angle of that tape relates to that vertical edge. So now the, the tape wraps around underneath the banana, and then it comes out along the surface, and I need to figure out where that is. So I need to look at this shape here. Bring that down. Bring this over here. So now I've, I've got my light lines reestablishing the form. I'm not going to overstate this edge along here. All right, what do I want to do next? Let's see. Hello from Trinidad and Tobago. Hello. Another Minnesotan, North Carolina, Florida, Oklahoma. I'm out here in Colorado. It's usually very sunny. Today it's a bit overcast, but I'll take it. Can still get the windows open. All right, so now I think what I want to do is start to work my way down the drawing, um, starting to bring this to uh, some sort of level of finish. Now I'm always going to be working through the drawing. And one of the things I talked about in the last um, the last one, or maybe the first one, um, you're bringing the object in the drawing out onto the surface. So you're trying to think about the entire object, the entire subject as one thing, and you're trying to allow that to emerge on the paper. It's not necessarily about moving from one piece to the next. At least that's not my approach. I know some artists that are really good at, at finishing one spot, moving to the next, moving to the next, and then having it all fit together. Uh, the process that I use really is about allowing the subject to emerge on the paper. Uh, so in this case, though, um, now I'm going to kind of work my way down. I'm feeling good that this is preserved as the white of the page. I think it's going to serve me well. I kind of like some of the texture that this vine charcoal is making just in the banana. It's, there's just some natural texture there that um, that helps to, it's going to, it's going to serve me well as I get into the kind of more detailed areas. Uh, so what I want to do is, let's see, I'm going to work on this tape and kind of bring things down from there. Um, I'm thinking now about contrasting edges. So the edge of the banana that this is confronting right now is largely horizontal. So I want to focus on my marks on them being more vertical in nature. So even if it's all very subtle, we, we perceive the texture in these marks and we're going to see them as vertical, and that contrast against the edge of the banana is going to allow this edge to pop. So I'm going to use my eraser to do some negative drawing there to pull that out. And when I do make these horizontal marks here, I want to keep them light. I don't want that to be a dominant thing that I'm looking at. Um, I'm going to take a shading stump um, start to blend this out a little bit. So just kind of establish that edge and now run these marks vertically. Let's see. So hopefully those marks are a bit vertical and I can actually run them kind of diagonally to reinforce the perspective of this tape. That overlap. I'm going to cut that back out now with my eraser. I'm going to go right over that tape edge. Uh, and now I'm going to reestablish this. And so what's interesting is really conceiving of the value of that tape. 
there are some areas where it becomes highly visible. So like right in here where that banana is reflecting more light here in the light area. Um, and even though the tape is in light here, it's still noticeably darker than the banana. But as you work your way down into the shadow area, it becomes much more difficult, especially if you squint your eyes, to see the change in value. There's a strong color change between yellow and blue, so it becomes highly visible. But if, um, if you squint your eyes and you look at these values, you realize that they're actually very close and very similar to one another. So I'm gonna, let's see, keep these marks running this direction. Let's see here, I'm gonna smooth this out a little bit. And one of, the, one of the things that I'm observing is this really cool little light right along this edge. I'm gonna, I wanna come back to that. I'm just taking a mental note of that. Um, and I'm gonna pull that back out so that it kind of separates this front edge here of that tape from that back edge. Um, and it, and if, I, if I can, as much as I can, I wanna think and see if I can observe a change in value on that tape from uh, right in here from this back blue to this front blue. And if I can, if I were to look at this, it feels like this is a little bit darker, but it's hard to tell. Um, so I wanna kind of give that some thought and pay attention um, to what I'm observing there. From India, hello, and Georgia, many, Canada, Alabama, Oklahoma. Fantastic. All right, so I'm going to, I'm thinking about these shadow forms. Now, one of the things I wanna be really careful about, so you can see I'm, I'm blocking in this shadow in the tape here. Um, I want to be careful about segmenting the tape. The tape still needs to feel as though it's one object, right? Uh, and it goes, for, it transitions from kind of a lighter area into shadow back into lighter again. Um, so I wanna be careful about my shadow edges as I'm working with those form shadows there um, and not to break them apart. I don't want them to become distinct shapes. I wanna pay really close attention to those edges. Um, now I wanna come back in here work on the form shadow here in the banana. And if I can, think about the, the overall value. You can see that edge between the banana and the tape is now, it's not very clearly defined. I'm gonna leave the detail of the, the end of the banana to, for later. Lock that in here. And now what we have is this nice situation where we have uh, the value here of the banana, moving into the shadow of the tape, moving into light on the tape where that's a little bit lighter in value than the shadow on the banana. So there's this really nice alternating light, dark scenario. Uh, something to think about in your own work if, if you're struggling with composition, um, really study what's happening with the alternating sequence of values in your work. You know, is there a, a pleasing balance between light and dark, and light and dark throughout the, the piece. Um, that's something that I have really struggled with in my own work is, is composition. And so um, as I'm, when I'm outside painting, I try to think about that. Um, it's one that I always forget. I pay so much attention to whatever object I'm looking at. I'm not thinking about how the values as just as, as abstractions how they really relate to uh, the, the composition, to the design of the, of the piece. And so um, alternating sequences of light and dark can help a viewer's eyes move through the subject a bit. Um, now I want to, I'm not feeling good about the slant to this tape here. So I want to bring this down next to me, bring this over, there we go. I think I overstated the curve a bit. Um, and really the curve of the tape is all in this tiny spot right down in here. That's really what I need to be paying attention to. And then bring this down. Okay, get that back out of the way. That feels a bit better. Um, I'm able to look at the screen here and see, see how that's all playing out. All right. 
see what's going on over here from Austria. Hello, Texas. Hello, Pablo. Hawaii, all right. New Zealand, Ohio, Phoenix. We got a lot of people out here. I hope everybody is taking this time to get some art done. I know it's crazy in general, but I could not live without this. So I am very grateful for this opportunity to be able to draw with you all here. Um, you know, I went to, went to art school to do this stuff and I often find that I don't do enough of it. So uh, again, I'm tremendously grateful for this opportunity to be able to do this. And, um, and for me, it's just an essential part of uh, calming my mind, um, giving myself something to focus on, giving my brain something to sink its teeth into um, that uh, takes me out of things. It's kind of like when you go to a movie, you come out of it and you're in this zone, you've gone into some sort of state of hypnosis or you know, the highway hypnosis of when you're driving home from work and you're thinking about something else. Um, that's the experience I get when I'm drawing. And uh, I'm very grateful for it. It's a bit of an escape. All right. Changing up the direction of my marks. So one of the things we talked about in a previous one is the, is the term hatching, cross hatching. So if you're new to drawing, hatching marks are these diagonal marks that you make to build up value in your object. Uh, cross hatching is when you do a series of those marks and, and but alternating the direction of them, having them overlap um, in a kind of a crisscross fashion. So. Um, so here I want to be really careful. It's kind of this dark edge against the light, but it's not a hard edge. And actually what we want to do is, is work on some of that line variation. It's harder in some areas. There's a bit of a kind of a detail kind of age spot there. And then it's, it starts to really soften and disappear. And I want my drawing to reflect that as well. It's called a lost and found edge. It's a, an edge that as you follow along it, it becomes sharper, harsher, um, and then it starts to disappear in some areas. Um, and actually backing along here, it feels like a fairly strong edge, but um, as I get into that photo, it, um, it, you realize that it's a fairly soft edge, so I want that to reflect that. Um, let me see, what do I want to do now? I want to shade this up a bit. So I'm using my shading stump. kind of blocking in these values. Again, kind of building them up um, as I go, rather than dialing it in in one spot, I'm moving around the drawing, thinking about that transition there. Not thinking about the edges too much at this point, because I can sharpen those up later, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, if you're if you're really paying attention to the directionality of your marks, um, and you know if you're I, I like to, I like to use my marks to reinforce the the perspective of whatever surface uh, you know, I'm working on, what that surface plane is doing. Um, if if that's not working for you, or if you're not even sure what that plane is doing, what the surface plane is doing, um, use circular marks. Um, they become more ambiguous in terms of their direction. Um, and then you can use a value to create that form if you need to. Just kind of feel things out. I'm going to build up the value here as, it, as that shadow from the upper banana crosses over the lower one. All right, now I can see that this area here still is too light in value, so I want to continue to work on that. Going to smooth this out a little bit. So what this is doing, if you're kind of curious about why these values look different, um, as I when I use my shading stump, uh, what happens is is these values in my initial pass when I'm using just the charcoal pencil, those values like right down in here are uh, creating an, an optical mixing effect. So it's because of the tooth of the paper as I scrape the the charcoal across it, it's leaving little bits of of that white paper showing through. 
um, and that affects our perception of that value. If you've ever seen the, you know, George Soros painting uh, of the, um, you know, the 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 Grand Jat, the, the kind of the picnic, the the day at the, at the on the Grand Jat that um, is used by these little dots of color. That's what's happening here, but in terms of value. And so when I'm smudging, it's actually just kind of smoothing out some of those areas. So it's actually lightening the darks and darkening the lights in those areas. So it's affecting our perception of those values. Um, and in, as you become more comfortable with that, you can use that to your advantage as you're, you're working. So in some areas, you want that textural contrast. Um, in others, you don't. And so, you know, for example, I could do the bananas and have them all um, use, kind of smudged using my shading stump and then leave the tape to be rough and, and really reflect and transfer the texture of the paper uh, through. And then just that shift in texture could be enough for us to become aware of the, the, uh, a change in form. It's just like in painting where uh, you might use a palette knife in one area and a brush in another, maybe smooth out one area and get more impasto and a thicker paint in another area. All right, let's see. All right, Charles, you're going to leave out the tape on yours. That's fine. Go for it. Uh, you know, one of the things that I've seen before um, uh, is, you know, when drawing fruit as a way to understand form is artists will then use a Sharpie or some sort of marker to kind of create these cross contours around the edge of the form um, to help visualize that as well. Um, gives you some sort of landmark that you can use to help reinforce the form. So that's something to think of as well. If you don't have any tape, try literally just drawing on it, or even, you can even cut the peel off of one. Anything that can really showcase the cross contour of these more organic forms can be helpful. So that's really what I was going for with the tape. A uh, little tongue in cheek here with all the, all their, all their um, buzz around the, the art world um, last year about the, uh, about the duct tape banana, but that's what it is. Teach their own, so. Um, I'm gonna smudge this out, smooth this out a little bit. I'm gonna squint my eyes, make sure that I'm not losing the shadow form, the, the, the shadow shape here. Um, you can see now, I, again, I'm losing that edge again. So it's kind of bringing that edge in and out throughout the entire process of the drawing. And in a way, um, letting those edges disappear into the shadows um, can be uh, really, um, really exciting uh, in, the, in the final drawing. Let's see here. Thinking about the path, the form of that banana. And this shading stump is picking up charcoal so I can actually use that as a mark making tool. Done very little negative drawing here. I don't have to clean up the edges a whole lot, which is nice. Uh, but right in here, I'm gonna need to bring that edge out a bit. Um, in order to create that sense of depth and really pull this banana in front, um, I am going to, what I'm thinking about as I do this is I'm, I'm working on that, that back banana and I'm just bringing it behind. It's almost like I'm imagining that the banana is gone in, um, in front. Uh, and so I'm just kind of shading that, that banana there and then I'm gonna use my eraser to pull out that edge again. This is a kneaded eraser. You see how that worked. It's kind of hit or miss. I don't know if that really did what I wanted it to. If I don't like that, I can just smudge it out and take another stab. What's hard is that what I'm trying to do is observe the, the contrast in, in, in values in the various light areas. So I can observe light here uh, along this edge and I can observe light here. The light's really catching it more strongly here and up in here. Uh, but this is still in light, but it, it, it's kind of in between. It's not in the, the, the deep shadow. Uh, it's kind of transitioning to those lights. Um, and so I, what I'm responding to is that change in value between the tape and then the lighter banana. But I want to be careful not to overstate that light. Um, and if anything, what I need to do then is come back in uh, with the, uh, the tape and darken this area to create the contrast I need. Uh, and maybe I need to pull out the highlights here. Just kind of be trying to be sensitive to the edges here 
Uh, I kind of lost that form, and I'm not sure if I'm happy with that, that shape, but again, one of the nice things about charcoal is it's generally forgiving. There's this kind of really nice point of light right in here that I want to be sensitive to. And then what I want to do is come back in here. I really want to pay attention to the fact that this is kind of convex. I imagine that's the convex edge pushing into the banana behind it. That's what helps pull this forward. Um, I'm going to bring these marks here in the, the shadow behind that edge and make those be vertical to help reinforce that, that change in direction, the change in the spatial relationships there. I'm having a hard time really seeing what's happening in here. So I know that, that banana, kind of, there's an edge there that I'm missing. Yeah, Carol, that's a, that's a good point about, you know, the, they, they bundle the tapes, the, the bananas and tapes at the store um, you know, the, actually, I like to sometimes when I'm working on fruit, I'll leave the stickers on the apple or, uh, you know, uh, tomato or something uh, because it, it actually helps to highlight the form a bit more when I'm, when I'm working on the painting. I'll kind of position it so you can really see how that, that, that uh, sticker or the tape um, wraps around the contour of that form there. So. Ah, Marie, sorry about that, using Charles's account there, so. Welcome, welcome. Switching back and forth between the shading stump and the charcoal. I used a, an ebony pencil to lay out the, the begin, the kind of the earlier stages. I really like an ebony pencil, it's soft. Um, and, and quite versatile. Um, and what I, I, I have a hard time with um, harder graphite pencils because I, um, even though I try to be sensitive, it, it can sometimes, it can emboss the page and leave these marks that I, I don't really enjoy. So I always kind of lean towards a softer pencil. And if I need a lighter mark, I'm relying on my pressure control rather than the natural tone of the graphite. Um, Okay, so I'm squinting my eyes, kind of double checking. Um, I need to double look at the values here. So if anything, this is a little bit darker in here. I wanna make sure that I'm really capturing the form. I'm gonna go a little bit over that edge, soften that edge a bit, and then reestablish it with, using the vine charcoal. And then what I wanna do is, now that I've kind of toned this down a bit, I wanna bring the highlights back, but I'm gonna bring them back more in the center of the form. Um, if you're not familiar with the term line of termination, uh, what the line of termination is, is that edge where we go on, on a form where we move from light into shadow. So that line of termination is right up there along that edge. And so I'm actually going to bring that, that light closer to that, that line of termination, not right up against it, but because I, I want it to transition into it. So kind of more in the center of the form is where I want the, the higher highlights to be. And then if I want that sharper edge here, go right over that tape and reestablish that form there. All right, and then um, we got some nice texture right along in here around that, that turn, the banana. And I'm just gonna let the, let the charcoal kind of skip across it. I'm not gonna be too worried about it matching the photo exactly. What's most critical is that it provides that little value and it defines the, the ridge and that turning edge of the, the banana. So I'm gonna add some form in here, adding some of these darker marks, switching to a tripod grip to give me a little bit more control. Uh, thinking about this form here, you know, in these small areas, like the end of the banana here, can go a long way in really understanding the form of the subject. So getting that right, getting the opening of here right, that shape is really, um, really kind of critical to our own understanding of the overall form. And what I want to do here is I want to darken this. I kind of use these circular marks to 
allow the charcoal to kind of blend more easily. And then I'm going to darken this as well. And there's this kind of darker edge right under here. I want to pay attention to how this, this upper banana comes in over the, the lower banana at this point. And then it kind of transitions. So there's a bit of this kind of S curve along there. Some of those little things can make a big difference in the overall drawing. So paying attention to the directionality of your marks, looking at the edges, looking for concave edges. Again, squinting my eyes. Uh, what I want to do is that I'm looking at the relationship now between the tape and the banana, where one side might be darker, the other might be lighter. In this case, this part here in the shadow feels darker than the banana when I'm on the tape. But as we come down in here, it feels a little bit different than that. So I'm going to look at perhaps lightening this up a little bit using my shading stump and then reestablishing the edge along in here. Start to define the edge along here a little bit more. Bring in my shading stump. Oops. Got to pick up my tools. Ah, the tape. So I added the tape here uh, for anybody who's late um, to, uh, because it's a really helpful tool to help showcase the form of the bananas. Um, especially when, you know, we have two objects that are very similar uh, in color and value. Um, you know, seeing how these, these two kind of interlocking forms relate to one another, that tape as a line that crosses over and around and through, it helps to reinforce the cross contour of that form. So I have a better understanding of that form. Um, one of the things I mentioned as well is that some artists will actually just, they'll, they'll use a Sharpie to draw around the form, around the, like say the, like the, the, the equator of the form as a way to understand that as well. And so it provides a visual landmark that references the overall structure that I can then use uh, in my work. Um, and it also provides me an additional opportunity to explore value relationships. Um, you know, we have that blue against the yellow. Those are highly contrasting colors, um, but they're, they, they have distinct values as well. Um, in the shadow forms, they become similar in value. In the light areas, um, because of their reflective nature, um, the, the, the light areas, the tape becomes a little bit darker. So there's a, there's a sensitivity to value that this uh, tape allows me to explore. And I had it lying around the house, and so I'm in, encouraged to stay indoors for the next three weeks. I had to figure out what I've got around me that I can use. Uh, this is really cool, what's happening in here. Um, you can see in the reference photo, there's a thin sliver of light catching the edge of that tape. Uh, where in contrast against the form shadow of the banana. So I'm going to bring that in a little bit later. Uh, one of the things I like to think about too, and you may have observed me, observed me doing is, um, you know, I alternate between drawing and kind of pulling the pencil and pushing it. And that all happens in the shoulder and the elbow. I'm move, I'm, again, I'm, I'm largely locking the wrist. It's, there's very little movement in the wrist. Um, and that, um, that control that, I, that I'm, I'm seeking comes a lot from the shoulder and uh, shoulder and the elbow. I want to evaluate whether or not this tape feels like one continuous form here, if it's breaking up too much. All right, let's see how that feels. It's feeling pretty good. I'm going to come back in a little bit and, and sharpen that up. But I want to move to the rest of the drawing for now. And here it's going to be really kind of interesting. It's a very subtle form. It's kind of nice actually to have this be subtle over here because um, it allows us to keep the, the focal point here in the center. So if I'm looking at the values of the 
the shadow and the banana here in this form here. It's all fairly subtle. And it's nice that that's right up against the edge. I don't like those horizontal marks are a little bit too strong. So circular marks here, knock those down. I like how that's actually just kind of falling into shadow. And I may keep that. I want to, as I'm looking at that, I want to be careful not to overstate, um, overstate that. And here, there's a very little form. So I'm looking at this edge right along in here. Um, and now instead of it being a line that comes down here, I want to look at that path. And then I'm creating that, that edge by using horizontal marks that follow this kind of vertically curving line here. And then let me check back here. Ah, thanks everybody. Yeah, my last name is Meyer. It's weird, it's got three vowels in a row. But I like it. All right. Working along in here. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of visual information. So and this is a kind of a good example of that, how that tape helps. So if I were to remove this tape, you can see there's very little happening in here, the very little shift in value, texture, things like that for me to understand that form. But having this edge now wrap around that helps me to, to see that and understand it a little bit better. Um, and there are gonna be times when you're working where you know, just simply having that, that knowledge, that understanding of the form is really helpful. One of the things I mentioned in the last uh, last session was the idea that marks are thoughts. It's something that runs through my head all the time. Every mark I'm making is a thought about what I'm observing, um, and it becomes a record of this experience that we've got here. So, you know, think about when, as you're working, you know, um, how you weight the drawing process against the drawing itself, against the object of the drawing. For me, I, I much prefer to focus on the, the act of drawing. If I'm not enjoying the act, I'm not confident that the final result will be what I want it to be. Um, even if it, it ends up being a, a really good drawing, every time I look at it, I'll have had that, that understanding of the memory of that, that less than positive experience. And so, Think about um, you know, how you weight that for yourself. And so one of the things I want to be careful when I'm doing my crosshatching, when you're changing direction as I'm going up and down, we're going to have a tendency to kind of bear down on the left and right and you know, the, the, the tips of those marks. You know, I'm sure you've experienced that when you're kind of, if you're crosshatching with a marker, for example, you'll get these dark spots on the ends. Um, so when I'm doing that, I'm actually lifting off the paper as I'm coming down. I'm, light, I'm letting up on the pressure at the bottom edge to try to avoid uh, kind of a darker um, form along in there. And then I can come back into this, knock down those values. Direction of your marks is really, really something. Okay, let's see. You can see this edge is probably perhaps too soft. And I want to make sure I prioritize the overall um, shadow shape um, here, keeping these light and loose. I can use the palm of my hand to bring this down a little bit. Try not to use the, my fingertips, which tend to be more oily and can mess things up. If anything, use the side of my, of my pinky or something, the side of my fingers, rather than the tips. Kind of build up some value here. I'm gonna erase out some of the lights in this area in a bit. And then allowing some of these values to kind of build here. We erase this back out to define this edge a bit. All right. Glad you're enjoying the explanation. If there is anything that I'm 
kind of talking about and you're just kind of curious to learn more about, use that chat function. I'm happy to explain things more thoroughly. There, there are some things that, um, you know, it kind of takes time to, to learn how to articulate what you do as an artist. Um, sometimes it just becomes very intuitive and, and I can definitely fall into that sometimes. I, I think I'm explaining it more effectively than I actually am. So call me out on that if, if something just leaves you scratching your head and say, what is he talking about? So this, I'm really just lightly scraping across the paper. Um, so as I squint here, the, the, the high point and the highlight is kind of right in this area. Um, so I want to just use my fingertip there and caught myself. Let me see if I can knock this down. I'm just trying to bring down the value here, maybe darken some of these areas in here. Uh, I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring it a little bit darker here in the center. You, you can kind of see some reflected light, some bounce light happening in here. It's all pretty subtle. And there's also some kind of translucency in uh, the banana that, that is kind of interesting. You start to see a, a shift in color if you, as you look closely in some of those shadow areas. Um, and that's one of the things that I really enjoy about painting, f in painting and drawing food is that, you know, you have the reflective surface of the objects. Um, but a lot of them also have a translucency um, that is quite fascinating. All right, so I'm going to bring that down there, kind of sharpen this edge up a little bit. Squinting my eyes again. Now I talked about this highlight. I haven't attacked it yet. I am going to continue to build up the values around it, though, because um, I've you know, value is relative, and if you're kind of new to, to, to painting and drawing, uh, one of the things you'll, you'll quickly learn is that every value, every color is influenced by its environment, by what is next to it and around it. Um, and so contrast will be heightened um, by two colors and two values next to one another. Um, and uh, you know, so I, I, the, this value here feels darker than it actually is because it's next to the, the highlight. If I take that same value, it's actually, you know, perhaps actually kind of more similar in value to something down in here, which might feel lighter. And there's, a, there's a lot of illusion happening in, in work, in, in your work here. So um, you're constantly adjusting the value relationships. As you, you know, as you kind of lock in a value in one area, as you make it the gray that you want it to be, um, and then you change the gray next to it, it's going to change the first one. And so then you have to adjust the first one again. I'm going to soften this edge along in here. All right. Let's see. I am going to bring this out a little bit. I'm feeling pretty good about this edge along in here. So I want to bring in this highlight. So as I'm working with my eraser, I'm kind of thinking about the same mark making conventions as, as I was with the, the charcoal. You know, looking at the direction of the planes, things like that. One of the things I like about the kneaded eraser is that you can shape it into all sorts of kind of lumpy forms that create uh, and suggest texture. So for example, if I want to pull out some texture here, I can kind of tap it in there. Um, this is a kind of an exaggerated texture, but it, it's pulling out some highlights that are kind of interesting, and I can start to add the details then within that. And so even though it doesn't match the specific details of the banana that I'm looking at, it uh, it provides a nice kind of organic break there, a suggestion of light and shadow there. Uh, you can see down in this lower portion, you know, there's some kind of more texture here. And so I can use that kneaded eraser, again, just kind of kind of clump it up, make these kind of lumps, tap and roll. And that starts to create some of that texture and smooth it out in areas where I need to. 
I feel like at this point I want to add this edge here, this the end of the banana. All right. Oh, my daughter Taryn is watching right now. Hello, Taryn. How are you? I hope you're drawing along. She has been this week. She did a fantastic cup the other day. She took a stab at the landscape on Wednesday. She is 10 years old. All right, what are we thinking here? Um, now, I'm, I'm not super happy with this highlight. To me, it is really kind of flattens out. What I think is actually gonna make it work more effectively is to drop the value down a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna use whatever charcoal is built up on the tip of my finger here. I'm just gonna knock that down, and I feel like that's gonna ultimately be more effective. And then in order to establish that light again, if I wanna make that brighter, instead of lightening that highlight up again, I'm going to darken the shadow next to it. This is that value relativity that I was just talking about. You think of value like octaves on a piano. It's about the relationship and you can raise and lower um, the, the kind of the tones, um, but keep the value relationships the same. And so that's what I think is gonna ultimately be more effective. I, again, I feel like that's even still too light. So I'm gonna drop that down in value. Um, and then I wanna pull maybe the highlight right out in here to pull that front edge out, let that back edge kind of wrap around into that light. All right, let's see, feeling good about that. I wanna to get to that highlight now. I've been, I mentioned that very early on, there's this little ridge of light right in along here that I love. It's very subtle, but I think it's gonna go a long way in differentiating between those values and those forms there. So I'm gonna pull that out. And it's too big, so I'm going to cut that back. Actually, maybe what I'll do is I'll use the edge of this, this edge of that, that eraser there. And now that's just too strong. So I'm going to then kind of work back into it. And that's too strong as well. Ah! Excuse me. Bring that back. Just kind of sharpen up that edge a little bit. Maybe create a little artificial line. So I wanna be careful about not overstating that. I don't want that to be a hard line, but a little stretch like that can be enough to kind of draw attention to that edge. And when you look at it from a distance, it kind of fades away. But if you're right up on it, it's, quite, it's highly visible. Let's see, I wanna let that stay fuzzy. That's gonna help push that back. And if anything, sharpen the edges along here. Now, this tape along here, I talked about earlier as well, it catches the light right along this edge. Pull that out with my eraser. Reestablish that form. And if this is sharp enough, it's not gonna, that, that hard edge that I just drew is not gonna show up too much. And then what I'm thinking about is, you know, that's, that, that even that little sliver of light is, is a reflection on the form of the tape. And I want my marks to continue to reflect that form of the tape. So I'm creating this dark edge as a series of diagonal marks rather than a hard line around this edge. If I did a hard line to the right of that highlight, uh, that would actually pop that, that line off too much and it would dissociate from the form there. Okay, let me see. I'm just gonna bring up some of the value here. So I can drop this down in value as well. <laughs> okay. Just reading some of the comments there. Thank you for participating. It really helps to uh, 
maybe something to talk about here. Often, this is something that happens all by my lonesome. And uh, so it's, it's nice to be able to share that. Meet people from around the world. Okay. I would like to... I'm going to overstate this shadow here. I'm going to make this darker than I'm actually perceiving it in the drawing. But I want to pop that edge of the banana a bit more. Um, and I don't want to lighten the shadow. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of darkening this. Let me smudge this out. Trying to think about the, the form of the banana, that structure there. Uh, let me reestablish this a bit. Okay. How are we feeling about that? I'm feeling pretty good about that. Let me see here. Uh, is everybody still doing good? We're England, all right. Mississippi. All right. Now I'm going to pull this highlight out here. Let's see. Right in here. Kind of feathering it a bit with the kneaded eraser. So moving along here, I want to define this curve a little bit more. So I want to be careful about the direction of my mark. So you saw that I kind of made a light pass over this path, but I want to define it by marks that run horizontally, but follow that path. You can pull out that form along here as well. Use my marks as to reinforce the cross contour. I don't think this needs to be a super sharp edge. And kind of, I kind of like the, the atmospheric quality of that. Let's see. And then I'm going to bring in the form. So I've got here the banana is a little bit darker than that shadow on the on the ground, on the cast shadow. As I come down here, we're going to have the alt do the opposite where I'm going to darken the cast shadow kind of as a negative shape against the lighter value of that stem. So you can see that that started to form not by kind of really drawing that line as much as drawing that negative space around it, darkening that space around it. Don't need to be super detailed with this. We're just going to let this drawing go. I'm almost done, but I don't want to end it before I'm really feeling good about it. So, but we're getting there. Uh, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking about the placement of that, looking at the landmarks around it. I'm starting this kind of dark spot on the edge of the banana. Thinking about that form. This is when we get this really interesting kind of sharp, harsh edge. So if you see that I've been kind of scraping the side of my charcoal against the paper, and what that does is it, it helps me preserve a sharp point for when I really need it. So in this area here, for example, I don't really need that sharp point. I just need to build up value. So as I'm doing that, though, it's sharpening the point of the charcoal. Uh, so then I can use it when I really do need it. I want to keep working on this area here. Thinking about that shape, building it, um, instead of drawing a line, I'm building it um, by using these horizontal marks. And so now I'm at this point where I can kind of define this edge along in here. And I've got that sharper point. 
to ask myself how critical it is that I really match that perfectly. And for me, it's not. I just, I like the idea of hitting that mark in one thin line. To me, getting that, that line quality correct is more critical than the proportions in this one. But if you're following along, you want to decide for yourself how critical that is. There are a lot of great artists that sacrifice correct proportion and perspective for emotional quality. Um, some artists really dial in the, the proportions, creating almost photographic likeness. Uh, and you have that whole spectrum in between. So you want to decide for yourself where you fit on that and what works for you. Let me kind of darken this. I've got, let me just kind of smudge this out again with the side of my finger. Lost that edge. So I'm going to use my kneaded eraser, sharpen that to a point again. And I think we're getting pretty close. So if you are, if you're at home looking for things to do, check out Artist Network. Um, wonderful resource for videos. Um, we got lots of great articles, things that you can explore, look for inspiration, build your skills. I'm really happy to be associated with them. Um, take this time, I encourage you to, you know, set aside some time during the day to draw. Um, kind of bring yourself into this, a level of focus, step away from the world for a little bit, self-care as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, so I, hope you'd, I hope you've enjoyed your time with me. I've had a great time. This is actually, I, I, I thought this was going to be fun, but it ended up being way more fun than I, than I thought it would be. Um, it's gonna, and as I just finish up the tape here, uh, I just want to thank you all for taking your time to draw with me. And we're going to call it a day soon, I think. Don't need to overstate that tape there. But there you have it. What do you think? Thank you for joining me. Um, looking forward to next week. What do I have next week? Uh, if, you, if you go to artistnetwork.com, you're going to see a, uh, the site where I have, um, I have a, a bunch of the other, uh, the, the upcoming sessions. So I'm going to be here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for as long as we need to. Um, and uh, doing additional drawings. So next week, I know we're going to be working on a lemon for one. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, check out uh, the website, see what's coming up next. Uh, I'm going to try to get that posted as early as possible so that you can kind of check out the reference photo. And if you want to take a stab at it, uh, take a stab at the drawing before the event, um, you know, go for it. And you can kind of think of your questions ahead of time. I'm happy to answer them for you. So thank you so much. Have a great weekend and I will see you all on Monday. Got to figure out how to turn this thing off.